Hi, this is Christy from birdmentor.com where I teach advanced skills to beginning birders and thanks for joining me today. So we're heading into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere and winter is typically a time where people traditionally would go within, you know, both figuratively and literally, and also a time for people to hone their crafts. And as bird lovers, it's a time for you to deepen your practice and to bump up your bird game while you're at it. Now, some people might think that, you know, well, why winter? You know, it's probably harder to learn about birds in the winter time because there's fewer birds around. Well, in my opinion, this is actually the best time to learn about birds because there are fewer birds around. With fewer species around, there's less of a chance that you'll get confused or flustered, you know? And in the spring and summer, there are so many birds around that people can feel daunted and overwhelmed with so many options. And so the cool thing is you don't have to study all of them. And this winter, in fact, I'm recommending just three. Now, these aren't just any three birds. These are three very specific and special individuals with key characteristics that will even help you locate the warblers and other migrating birds when spring and summer comes around. Okay, so first of all, they can be found all across North America, more or less. The other thing is that they stick around for the winter, and so they don't head to South America. Now, these next two are really important and I think kind of awesome. So they act as ushers or what I like to think of as tour guides to the migrating birds when they come through. Now also, they can be fairly vocal or at least make a fair bit of noise, which makes them a lot easier to find. And this is key. So this fall, I went for a run in this tall, beautiful oak and maple forest that's right at the edge of a marsh. And um, while I was running, which I'm prone to do, I always run with my binoculars. Um, and while I was running, I could hear these three friends that I've just told you about, or I'm gonna tell you about. And uh, when I heard them, I decided to stop and wait because I knew what they would possibly be bringing with them. Uh, so I waited for them to get closer. And as they got closer, and I probably had to wait maybe like five minutes or so. Um, and as they got closer, I all of a sudden started to see a bunch of the other people that they brought with them. So. It was amazing. At first I saw a magnolia warbler and then came in a northern parala and then a black and white warbler and then there was a yellow rumped warbler and and after waiting there for a few more minutes I could hear a song that I've never heard before. And so I tried to find out where it was. It was up like kind of mid mid tree height and it literally it was the first time I had ever seen this bird before and it was a hooded warbler. And I just felt so lucky because I know that if I hadn't waited and um, if, if those three friends hadn't keyed me in, that I literally would have missed that bird, you know? If I had just been like, oh yeah, it's these three birds, you know, singing like, whatever, who cares? Um, then I never would have seen this one. And the hooded warbler is so amazing. I don't know if you're like me, where you get super excited to see the warblers in the spring, but if you are, if you start to pay attention to the tour guides of your area, then they'll actually tell you where the warblers are because when the warblers come through sometimes they don't especially in the fall they don't make as much sound as these other birds do so i mean for me it's just key that being said getting to know their habits like their sounds their behaviors where they like to hang out all of that takes the same kind of devotion and curiosity and care that building any friendship or relationship does. Right. So let me share them with you now. So bird number one is the sweet and also curious chickadee. Now, whether it's the black cap chickadee, the mountain chickadee, the boreal chickadee, the Carolina chickadee, it doesn't matter. All of them will act as tour guides. Okay, bird number two is the inquisitive nuthatch. Now the white breasted usually more than the others, but you can also include like the brown headed, the red breasted, the pygmy nuthatch, although not quite so much because they're just usually pretty focused on themselves. And finally, bird number three is the unassuming yet fairly confident downy woodpecker. Now, not only are these three birds often found together as they move through the forest, also, at the right time of year, they'll have others in tow as well. Now, I don't want to just leave you with that information and give you nothing to help you learn them, so I want to give you a couple assignments to work on. Now, the first assignment is for you to spend some time outside, and what I want you to do is the next time that you see or hear one of these birds, I really want you to spend some time like getting to know their songs and their calls, right? And so at first, in the beginning, I want you to spend about three days a week or three times a week 
um, listening for this and or at least until you can become as familiar with their sounds their songs and calls as you are with your best friend's voice now when we're talking about the downy woodpecker I want you to try to get to know the sound of their drilling in the trees as well as their voices because each woodpecker has their own pattern of drilling so get to know that one with the downy now assignment number two is to learn where their place favorite places to hang out are so you know, ask yourself like how high up in the tree does it like to go? And, um, you know, just like when you're out and about. So whatever you're doing throughout the day, when you see or hear one of them, just make a note of it. Be like, oh yeah, I saw that chickadee kind of like, you know, working around the mid level of the tree, or I noticed that the nuthatch was always doing this or that, right? You know, the final assignment is more of a challenge, and that's to try to get to know the bird by its behavior alone, right? So think about it, like ask yourself, like how do they fly from branch to branch? How do they land on the ground or on a branch? You know, how do they look for food? All those kind of things. Try and get to know their specific um, approaches to each of these. Now, these assignments might sound pretty simple to some of you, but I don't want you to underestimate the power of either the assignments or the birds themselves because they might have more to teach you than you think. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did and you'd like to learn more about birds, you can head on over to the bird mentor website where you can check out my new book called identify any bird anywhere and also at least minimum uh, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button in one of these corners where you can subscribe to my channel and get all the videos when they come out so thanks so much again and please get out there and help spread some bird love in the world